can ask the question, why you are choosing the tangent line? Why not other? What's wrong with other lines? Why they can't give you the approximation or the derivative? Why only the tangent line? The equation can help you approximate the equation. Oh, it's good. Then we can have two other many sides. Therefore, we select that line which moves in the direction of the equation. What do you mean by that? Does curve have a direction? Sir, it's a liberty angle, sir. It's a liberty angle. No. No. It's a liberty angle. No. It's a liberty angle. It's a liberty angle. I can also, if I wish, I can... I can... Really take a tiny, 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 tiny chunk of this line and you will start believing that it's not really the big difference between Curve and the line. Okay. Anyway, so we'll, we'll, we'll try to answer that question. Mm -hmm. you know, learning math should be like learning physics. Question everything. Why you are doing it? Why we are doing it? Anyway, so, so, so this is kind of F, so one dimensional example. We try to, we, we try to basically, the way you do things here, I would like to take that thing, that fashion, and apply the same fashion to the higher dimension. So, what should be the line of such kind of an equation? So, the line of such kind of an equation. So, if this is point A, this is point F of A, okay, F of A, the line of such kind of equation you can approximate it by, okay, y equal to plus something times that's right. Okay. Something times that's right. So, so usually why the formula that you learned in your geometry, so y minus y1 so times x minus x1. What I want to like to do is that can this line approximate the curve locally? So if you, if you want to approximate the line, you know, the curve locally on this point through this line, so what do you need to do? You need to take the difference and think about the error and try to you know, the error you know, as small as possible. Okay? Okay? So, what I need to do, let's think about it from the perspective of, so let's, let's take f of x, okay? And subtract, for example, this y, the equation of y from okay, So, what is the equation of y? A plus lambda times of x. So I'm computing the difference. Original form. And that's line. But we may assume that it's unknown. f of x is point there. And f of x is this function. I'm talking about this entire function. And I'm saying that entire line actually. So can I approximate this entire function by entire line? Of course not. But there must be some region where I mean, we can think of you know, something happening. So I'm just taking the difference of both. So when you take the difference of both, you want to evaluate the difference of both, okay? What are the difference between Okay, so, so that this difference can be written as uh, what f of say uh, x minus f of a and minus um, lambda times x minus a, okay? So if I denote 
this quantity x minus a by some number h. Okay. Then I can rewrite this expression as f of a plus h minus f of a minus lambda h. Okay. And I'm okay. So so difference between these two quantities is this quantity. Okay, this quantity. And let's call this quantity the error. So I'm calling it error. So, so this error is depending on what? So it's depending on f. Uh, it's depending on f the function. Okay. It also depend on, say for example, lambda. It depends on a and it depends on h actually. So I'm, I'm, I'm using all these symbols with this error because that's that's where the error is depending on. So mainly it's depend on a and h, okay, for a given f and lambda. For a given f and lambda, mainly it depends on a and h. So what what do you want to do with this error? So we like to study under what condition this error will go to zero. The moment this error will go to zero, this difference will go to zero and hence your function can be approximated by the line of But the real thing is when this error goes to zero. So the error is the difference between the function, evaluation of a function. So you are evaluating f of x, okay. Let me let me give this guy a name, say g of x. That's g of x. And I'm, I'm computing what? I'm computing f at a point, at an arbitrary point, and g at an arbitrary point. Okay? So g is my candidate for approximation. So I would like to know that, okay, what is the difference? What difference? Would, you know, the evaluation of f at x and evaluation of g at x would give it. So if they are, so if, if this is, you know, if, if, if g is a good approximation to the f, then this difference should be small actually, or negligible. So the difference between the evaluations is what we call this error. Take it, call it this error. This is error approximation. Of this is going to be equal to 
the value of x. And what would be the value? Above of a m has the difference of what? Last is what
what should I do actually to know that okay, which of the you know, you know the error and the edge, which of the error and the edge basically is you know going to the zero more rapidly. So what what can I do? Okay, maybe I can take the edge goes to zero and take the ratio of the error by edge. Let's compute this. Right? So I'm, I'm comparing. So I know that when h goes to zero, these both guys are going to zero. Let me give you an example. So you have done in calculus analogy. So I have e power n over n, and I take limit n goes to infinity. What will happen? What will happen? So you should infinity. Why? Above is growing faster. Okay. How about how about if I have n over e to the n? Then sir, it's zero limit. Why? Because the denominator, the denominator is growing faster and as compared to the. So can I have a similar reasoning here? Yes. So when when this ratio would go to zero? When the error is rapidly going to the zero, okay. So this will go to zero when error where e, okay, is f lambda is rapidly going to zero, right? See it? Error is rapidly going to zero. This expression here. I can't find this expression here. Which is fine. So what can I do? So I can take this entire expression and divide everything by h. So let's divide everything by h. So what are you going to get? Okay. 
and hence I want this go to zero. Tell me what should be the lambda. Imagine I'm taking the limit and this guy has gone to zero. This is going to force this difference go to zero. So what should be the lambda? And what is this? You always learn, you know, lambda derivative with the slope of the tangent line on the curve. Have you seen it? I just saw it actually. I have no other choice except big lambda to be f prime of a. Is it making sense? So I would, I would define basically Let me, let me summarize what we have done and then return back to basically what we have done a lot of things that we have, we have lost. So we started with, with uh, two definitions and they didn't work. So we started with another approach that imagine I have a curve and a line and I want to linearly approximate And lambda should be derivative. Otherwise, the difference shouldn't go to zero. So that's what is precisely. I'm saying that you have lots of lines. This is the problem. So if I have a curve and a line, and I want to know that how good this line, whose equation is this, is a good approximator or approximator of the curve. So I have f of x and a line whose equation is g of x equal to this. Okay. Then what we did, we created, computed the difference. And this difference is going to give us the error. Okay. And then if, we, if I want that this g of x should approximate f of x at every point, okay, then this error must go to zero. But this error would go to zero. This error go to zero demands two things. Okay, so there is a penalty. There is a price that you need to pay if you want error to go to zero. Actually, and the price is first you need to assume that your function should be continuous, and you need to assume that h goes to zero. Why I need a continuity of the function because I want this difference to go to zero, and l h goes to zero. And if we are ready to pay this price of continuity and f goes to zero, then error would go to zero. And hence, you're going to say that yes, f and f g is approximating f. Okay. When you know um, uh, the difference is that the, the h is zero, but you have to keep also in difference that h is x minus a. In other words, the points where g is approximating x you know, are not much different uh, away from A actually. If you to zero, x and A should be closer actually. It must be close and the, the more closer you are, you are choosing a point to the A, the more good approximation, the more approximation, better approximation, you know, G is going to provide you for the X actually on that X. And then we thought that okay, through this point, not only this line can pass, but a lot of other lines can pass. Okay, and each of the line is going to have a rate by uh, you know uh, by which the error is going to you know zero. So what we would like to know, we would like to find that line that has you know that rate you know optimal in such a way that it rapidly goes to zero. Okay, so out of all these lines, which in, in, in case of which line the error rate goes to zero rapidly, you know, the fastest possible. Okay. So, so 
So it, it should be, you know, that line, okay, it should be that line whose slope is derivative. And whose slope is derivative? That's the tangent line, actually. That's the tangent line. Okay? So in other words, what does all this analysis is telling you that if you want to have, if you have a curve and you want to find a line that you know give you the perfect approximation, you know, to the curve or a good approximation to the curve, okay, then its slope must be same as the derivative at that point. And that line is the tangent line. Okay? Analysis. So what we want to do? We want to play the precisely same game in higher dimension. And that's what we like to do. Good. Yeah, so you know, so there is there is a remark actually that I must make. Uh -huh. What the risk is that you have to lay a plus lambda x minus a? Yes, sir. Have a plus? Yes, sir. F of x minus sigma x. Ah, that's that's the equation of the line. So if I give you the coordinate of a, this point, this point is a f of a, and I give you an arbitrary point from here, which is x y and I am giving that y a name v of x and I, and I give you, so in other words, the one point is one point on this line is a f of a and another point on this line is x y but I am giving that y a name of x v of x so the question is what should be the equation of the line this must be the equation of the line is it making sense? there is another that we must realize. If you want just approximation, just approximation, then the price that you need to pay is that f must be continuous at that point. If I want the best approximation out of all these approximations, best approximation, there is another additional price that you need to pay. Okay, and that additional price is that the function must be differentiable at a. Because if, if this is not differentiable at a, you can't have this lambda. And hence the slope of whatever line you like at a. Okay. So, I like to write this as a remark that following are equivalent, following are equivalent, what are equivalent? That f has the best approximation, you know, the book is calling it good approximation, and the second thing is F is differentiable at A. So these two things are equivalent. In other words, if, you, if f is differentiable at a, yes, you can find the best approximation to the function at a. Okay? And if f has the best approximation at a, this would only happen if you have f is differentiable at a. Okay? So what are you? F e following are equivalent. Okay? Following are equivalent. These combinations are equivalent. So that uh, I hope you got some picture of it. Right? So the rest you will, when you will read it for yourself, you will take a sense of it. So what I would like to do now, if I have a function, imagine in your head like the surface. Okay. So what I would like to do, I would like to do precisely the same thing. Okay. So I would like to first find the error, and then I would like to find, you know, so in other words, I have a function f, okay. then I would like to find something linear that approximates my function okay. and since that something linear that is going to approximate my function, okay, 
Okay. Um, you know, the, the difference of function in that something linear is going to have some error. And what we want to do, we want a, we want that error to rapidly go to the zero actually. Okay, so when, when error would rapidly go to the zero, that would allow me to compute the derivative as you know we saw here actually that when error was going rapidly to the zero, okay, the lambda turns out to be you know the derivative.